Welcome, Clement, to the Ben Awad Incorporated interview. This is going to be a React interview to test out your skills. But before we begin on the coding portion, I would just like to quickly ask you why you're interested in working at Ben Incorporated. That way we just, you know, get a little vibe to see what kind of person you are. So the truth is that I was bullied into doing this interview because uh, this person by the name of uh, Benjamin Awad wanted to put a washed up front end developer to the test in front of millions of users on YouTube. Uh, but so that's why I am here. Uh, I don't know. That sounded kind of like you don't have any backbone, Clement. We want employees here to be strong and independent, but let's hopefully your React skills make up for this. But uh, we're about to find out. So what I'd like you to do first for me here is I want to start off real easy, get you warmed up here. Could you make just a counter for me? I want to see like the number zero on the right and I want a button and I can press that button and it increments to two and it increments to three and so on. Sure, okay. And the button for as far as like CSS goes, is it fine if I'm, if I'm just like putting the stuff on the page without? Yep, default Much HTML CSS. elements, all good. No styling required whatsoever. The uglier, the better. Okay, the uglier the better. This is my jam. Yes. This interview just got like really fun. All right, so since they're importing React uh, like this here, I'm just gonna grab use state from React like this. Okay. And we're gonna keep track of our counter in a state variable. So we'll say const counter set counter equals use state. And you said you want the counter to be initialized to what? Zero uh, or zero. one? Okay. Surprise me. Okay. And then here we are gonna have, I guess we want this to be really ugly, right? So we'll just put this in a P tag. P tag. Fantastic. And we'll have our counter. Uh, perfect. You see that zero? I do, loving it already. And then we'll put a button um, there's no autocomplete here. A button, which is going to say, I guess, like increase counter, and we'll have an on click function, and the on click will be um, will be like, I guess I'll, I'll make it like this: set counter to counter plus equal or plus one. Let's see. So when you when you press the counter you set the counter to whatever the current counter is, plus one. So if you increase it, it goes up. Are you seeing, by the way, if I'm pressing the button, are you seeing it go up right now? Like I'm at 17? I, I think it's we have independent web views, so I can't, but I believe you because I'm pressing it and it's working great. Fantastic okay. job. You have passed awesome. test number one. Do, wait, do so I now get the top gonna, already? Oh, it's not over. So you're getting much closer. But I got to make sure that, you know, have some real life skills here. <laughs> and so what I want to test out next is hitting an API. What I have here is a random user API. I don't even know what data it gives back to us because I haven't used this recently. But what I'd like you to do, just so we can see what data it gives us, is could you fetch this API and then maybe just display as a string and react so we can just, you know, see what the API gives us here? So let me see. Yeah, is this like a legitimate... Website? No, yeah, it's legit. If you if you if you do a Git request, it'll give you JSON back. So I'll I'll tell you that much for sure. Okay. Let me but just what go. the shape of that JSON is, I didn't bother to look. Slash, okay. I forgot what it is. I see. Yeah, I just I just went on it, and it looks like it's an ob a JSON object. So I think for this, the I'm going to use a, a library called Axios. Can we import Axios in this? Yes. We, we can. Yes. Right? So I believe if you just you know just do import there, you you can it'll just prompt us to import it. And by other, I forgot to mention this, but like feel free to Google things, Stack Overflow. If you need to do anything, totally yeah. fine. So let's see, Axios. Yeah, and if it doesn't auto add it, I believe it should auto add it or not auto add it, but uh, prompt us on the right in a second. Yeah. So Axios, let's see how we use it. npm install, sure. So you you uh, require Axios, and then it says you do Axios.get. So like I'm going to copy paste just something that I'm seeing on the npm um, page. So this is what they do on npm as an example. Um, so let's see if we could just do that. Uh, we would have 
I'll put a function at the bottom of my component, but this would probably be like in a separate file, right? It would be like in an API file, but it's fine if I put it here. Ooh, bonus points for best practices. Okay, okay, I like it. But, but do you want me to actually create another file or no? No, 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 no. stick it here, stick it here, okay. that's fine. Okay, cool, so we'll, we'll create a, a function, so we'll call it like fetch random data, and uh, we're just gonna hard code in that. It'll be like return Axio, so I guess let's copy this, put it at the bottom here. Uh, should not be commented out. Ah, let's uncomment this, okay. So return axios.get, and this is, um, we're gonna grab this. I think we can just pass in this, this uh, website, right? I think we can just make the get request like this. Um, ooh, why are they not using ES6 functions here? So I'm gonna remove this. That's a great question. Uh, for here, I guess for now, we'll just have like, um, Error. Do they have the types? They don't have the like function response. Any is it fine if I'm just typing these as any for now uh, in TypeScript? It's leave it totally up to you. Whatever you prefer. All right. It looks like they're they're allowing me to do this. Um, whoops. Whoa. What did I just click? You'll see. Thank that you. My screen. eyes were bleeding having to look at the word function there. Glad to see arrows are back. Um, okay, so let's see, right now we're just console logging. So this, by the way, would, re would return, I guess the type is, in, is inferred, but it returns like promise.any. Um, and here we would probably want to return res. Um, let me just remove this type because it's inferred. Okay, so let's have a button that calls this API. Let's see if this actually, oh, what did I just type? I can't, I don't have default VS code key bindings in here. Okay, so let me do another Rip. button. This will be fetch random data. Do I have a place where I can see logs by the way in here or no? Yes, if you, uh, it should be at the very bottom of the like uh, website on the right, it should have console on the left side. Ooh, okay, cool. So let me see if I were to console.log in the counter, console.log foo, and then I press Okay, cool. But you can't see my, my logs, right? Nope. Okay, so on click for fetch random data, we're gonna call fetch random data. Let's hope that this Axios thing actually works. Fetch <laughs> random, fetch random data, data. Why is this not, why is this squiggly? Fetch random data was used, uh, I'm gonna put this at the top. This is why you would wanna have this in another file. Um, actually, that was weird. Okay, so fetch random data. Let's uh, click fetch random data and see if it actually works. It did work. So it returned data results and it's in zero, gender, female, name, object. So I'm getting basically a bunch of information from some random user, it seems like. And it's not the same info that I was getting in the other website when I went on it. So I'm assuming it's generating it every time you fetch. Yeah, the actual, the contents, the shape should be the same, but the contents are random. Yeah, and what do you want me to do with this? Uh, could you just start by just like dumping it to the, to the screen as like a string? Like I wanna see the JSON just like spewed all over all the browser <laughs> on the right. Just like completely spewed. All right, so yeah. we'll have another state variable, which is gonna be, I suppose, uh, random user data JSON. And by the way, I am a big fan of Java variable names, aka like very descriptive variable names. So I hope that- I mean, we're in TypeScript, works. so you know, it's it's understandable, I suppose. Exactly. Okay, so I'll declare this uh, state variable as an empty string. And here I suppose that then um, this will return uh, I guess we can destructure, destructure this res to be data and we'll return like json.stringify data. And I'll comment, I'll, I guess I'll console.log um, the data still. And um, then here, fetch random data. 
So fetch random data. Uh, this is a promise. Ooh, should I use should I use async await? That's a great question. Should you? And actually, do you mind if instead of instead of actually should we make it in a button or should we fetch this on page load? Um, I'll let you choose either. We're gonna we're gonna do. We're gonna do one of those in a second, but yeah, for for now, pick whichever one you want to try out with. Okay, let's do, let's do on page load. So I'll add a use effect here, and we will do a use effect that only gets called on the first time. And so this is very intuitive. If you pass in an empty array here, this will mimic like component <laughs> to did mount, right? <laughs> um, and then shots we're, fired, Dan. <laughs> shots fired, Dan. Uh, we will call fetch random data in here, and um, I guess yeah, we'll make this async await. So const random uh, data, random data, random yeah. Let's just call this random data equals await fetch random data. Then we will set this. Here, I'll have to make the function async in a second. Um, and then here we will, when we don't need this button anymore, so I guess we'll remove this button and we'll just have another p tag. Let's put another p tag that has um, in it the random user data JSON. And I suppose this should be more of a string. And so this is gonna be a const, is async, does async go here? Let's see what's going on here. Uh, argument of type uh, unexpected token. Where do I have a token? Unexpected token, expected, colon, is my await? Let me see. Uh, you know what, Ben? My async await is feeling a little bit washed up right now. So instead of doing that, I am going to do fetch uh, random data dot then, and then I'm going to set to this in here. And if it works, gonna, it works. We're not going to catch any errors because uh, we don't do that here. Oh, our code doesn't have errors, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, you're going to have to forgive my typings. I feel like maybe we're just better off like going with like a scuffed TypeScript here. Um, yep, I, yeah. I love scuffed TypeScript. String void. So I guess, yeah, here we can put like, or this, or here, like, if you want, if you want to be really fancy, we could put like an error message that says like, no user data. Don't get now. too fancy for us. We're in React here. <laughs> okay. So does this, does this look good? Yep. This looks great. And I'm just going to just, just make this a pre tag. That way we can see the data all pretty. Okay. And maybe sure. we'll just say like uh, null two here, null two. And does that? Yep. I don't know if it made it that much prettier actually. Oh, fancy! Maybe if I. Uh, it's a, it's a little bit of an ugly <laughs> JSON, but it's. It it just it I don't I think it's because it's trying to center it or something. I think the styles dot. I think it's the styles there. Let me just kill that. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, now our JSON's a little bit prettier. All right, I just I just wanted to do that also so I could see what the JSON JSON shape actually was. Yeah, you know, um, but awesome. I will I will say I'm actually having like kind of fun doing just like normal React, not like <laughs> algorithms, not a real product where you're you're stressing about building like the best user experience. Here I'm just like coding. This is fun. You're just code React. React's fun, you know. This is great. And you're doing great so far. We actually have you've passed 100 percent so far. My next okay. thing that I'd like you to do with this data is, you know, to actually display the results as like some UI components. So nothing fancy here. I just want to see like the name of the user, and then also let's do like I believe a picture is in here. Yeah, if you could just display like the name of the user in their picture. Okay. So. Let me see. So the results, so actually it was kind of nice to put them like this. That way I don't even need to look at the logs. Um, we have the results and do we have multiple users? No, we only have, we only have one user, it looks like. Right now we have one, but assume for this that we may possibly have more than one user in this like results array. Okay. Okay. And so you want me 
to effectively display every user name and every user image on this page. Yep. Okay. So let me think about this. I think we're we're going to want to store, I think, our our results um, in a in a state variable for simplicity. So I'll have const uh, I'll put just like user infos set user infos equals use state. This will be an empty array. Uh, I guess I'll put the type as like any for now, but this would be like whatever the results type is. And so then here, this random data, uh, we will do set user infos to be the random data dot results, right? Let's see why this is squiggly. Probably um, doesn't. Oh, because we're JSON not stringifying. So you know what? I, you know what I'll do instead of stringifying this data here. I'll put data, um, and then here we'll put random data. JSON not stringify random data, and then um, remove the semicolon. And yeah, you don't need to display the the JSON anymore if you don't want to. I'm keeping it now just for a second, but then I'll, I'll remove it after. Okay, so we've got our uh, results, and so, or user infos rather. Um, for now, is it fine if I don't like modularize this, or do you want me to make like another component to modularize like these results? Now, don't worry about like uh, a component thing and all that jazz. Just do it the, like, okay. the you find the easiest way. Okay, so then under under this button here, we'll do something like um, you know uh, user infos dot uh, map right because we've got an array dot map we'll have a user info and an idx and this will return um i guess we can put yet another p tag and here this will be something like get full user username passing in user info i'll have this get full username function here that takes in a user info and it returns. Um, so we have name, so it returns return user info. Actually, let's remove this. We'll do const. Um, I hate that it re renders automatically as I type because I can't see. So name. <laughs> then you can't see the JSON. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Name first, last. Okay, so we'll do const name. First, last equals user info return first and last name. And here, by the way, I'm 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 assuming that I have creative agency um, to display this as I want. But if you want me to display yes. this in a different way without like the first name first or whatever, we can change. No, nope, that. that's chill. Okay. So get full username, user info. Um, why is this implicitly has any? That's fine. Um, and then I guess we will put an image and I, I'll wrap this in these empty uh, tags. Uh, image, let me remove the image for a second actually. So is this actually showing up right now or no? Get full, doesn't look like it's showing up. Why is it not showing up? Give me one second. Is um, let me add just a key here for semantic react. Um, oh, because I have, I have an arrow function and I don't have a return. Does this look good? <laughs> we need another parenthesis. Does this look good? Yeah, there, writer Koti. That is an interesting name, Ryder Koti. Ryder Koti. <laughs> Koti is a French word. It means side. Okay, so we've got the full usernames. Um, yes, I don't care that this is any. In theory, in theory, uh, because this is an interview, I should behave, behave and do this well. Interface user info, this would have, uh, we said, what does it have? It has at least a name property. And here in theory, we could do interface user name, and this is gonna have a first, a last, and a title. 
whoops, okay, and this is going to be a user name, and here, I'll just put this here, even though this should be inferred from somewhere higher up, like we should probably have the random data um, define, you know, the, the, the what the random data looks like. Um, okay, so why is this complaining? Read cannot read property results of undefined. Why is that undefined? Did I mess up something? Where, where does it tell you there's an error? Here on line 44. So for me, it actually has a squiggly on line 32. Yes, I have also the squiggly on on. Okay, you have both. Oh, this is this is username, user info. Oh, there. Okay, so the, this squiggly line on line 44 was a bug on their part, I think. Uh, but the bug was that user info is user info, not username. Okay, so uh, we've got this. You want me to put the image tag now? Yes. Okay, so the image, where do you find it? It's under picture. Okay, so then here we'll put picture in user info interface. I'm at the top here. Um, oh my god, I hate how it recompiles. Okay, picture, <laughs> large, medium, thumbnail. Is it fine if I go with thumbnail? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, so picture, we'll put, you know, interface, user, picture. This is gonna be like, we'll just put thumbnail for now, string, user, picture. And so here it'll be image, uh, forgive me if I don't know how to render an image in React. I think this is how you do it. We'll do user info, user info dot uh, picture dot thumbnail. Right? Yes, it's showing up. I see Excellent. a picture of someone. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking we do one last thing. So we have the results. And what I'd like to do is add a button here to load more results kind of like paginate through the list of users. Now I actually don't even know what the uh, the thing for this is, so I'm gonna go check the API and then I'll tell you what the actual URL param we have to pass in is. So the API, okay. if you put this URL param, page one, page two, page three, it'll give you the next page for the results. So if you could add a new okay. button that's like uh, load more and we can press that button and what it'll do is it will, you know, grab another user and it will display them. Okay. And do we want to display all the, can, like, do we want to just append to the users that we're displaying or do we yes. want to just display the next one? Okay. Append. Yep. Okay. So then fetch random data will likely take in a page. So it'll take in a page uh, number, which is going to be a number. And um, we could probably default this to zero. Does it start at page zero or page one? Um, I think it starts at page one. Classic, classic non-zero index. <laughs> I'm just taking a guess yeah. though, but uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing here, and by the way, I'm kind of you know working off the cuff here. So maybe maybe there would be a prettier way of doing this, but I'm just gonna add a pagination token or number here to this method. We'll default it to one. So right now our initial call is still calling the first page, right? But if we pass in another, then it would pass in. We can still call this with another number. So we are gonna have um, our get method here that adds in the query param. So this is gonna be page equals, um, whoops, what am I doing? API slash page equals page number, right? Okay, so this seems to still be working with page number one. And so you want us to append stuff on this new button that is gonna call the next page. So that means that we need to know what the next page token, I'm, I'm assuming this returns the next page token. Does it? Yeah, it returns info page one. So we can presume that the next page is page two and we can presume that there are like an infinite amount of pages. Yes. Okay. So um, we had user info, um, user infos were, was here. I guess I'll have like another state variable, whoops, another state variable that's gonna be like 
next page. Um, so const use, or sorry, uh, next page token. Oh, I'm, I'm so used to Google APIs where we always do next page token. We'll do next page number set next page number equals use state. Uh, the next page number is going to be one at the beginning. And we can actually, uh, if we want to be more explicit here, we can always do fetch random data with the next page number. So we don't even need to make this default to one. Um, and then set next page number. So here we'll set pit next page number to random data, random, I can't type, random data dot info dot page plus one, right? Yep, um, that's looking good so far. But it is airing out random data, not date, okay? And here again, I should have defined the interface of random data somewhere, but let's just go with this for now. Okay, so uh, set next page number. And so here we will have a button under increase counter maybe. By the way, let me, let me comment at the JSON. Um, so button under increase counter. Uh, I don't have my VS code key binding. That's totally fine because I am an adaptive software engineer who can adapt to a new IDE on the spot. I love it. Um, okay, so we are gonna do, this button is gonna be uh, fetch next user, let's call it that. And it'll set, or sorry, it'll fetch, um, so let's see here, we're gonna wanna clean this up a little bit. So, at the very beginning, we are going to have a function here. Um, I'll write it here, which is const fetch new, fetch next users, okay? Um, and what it'll do is it'll do what we call here in this use effect. And we'll, we'll call it in the use effect, so here I'll have like fetch next user. But instead of instead of setting the results, it'll say const new results, new results equals um, wait or new user infos, new user infos equals, and we'll take in the existing user infos, right? And then we'll take in the random data dot results and this will be then set here, okay? So that way we can just reuse this uh, function all the time. Um, let me remove this, this thing for now. We'll comment this out. Um, so fetch next user. So here at the very beginning, we would be fetching the next user uh, one, or sorry, we would fetch next page number here like this. Right, so this would be, um, oh, we don't even need that. Okay, we can just do this. Although we, we would maybe make it more functional. I kind of prefer more functional, but I don't think this matters right now. Okay, fetch next user. Um, and then, whoa, why am I getting a bunch of users right now? <laughs> um, I must have try Try refreshing something. the page if you want to start. Oh, because it it's, it's hot reloading on you. Oh, oh, it was already adding them. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing only one now. Vicente Morales. Okay, so then on our button, fetch next user, we're gonna do on click and we can legit just call fetch next user. And I think it's gonna work. Oh, it's beautiful. It's working. <laughs> it is. I. Uh, although I, I did get, oh, I, I think I hit the last page. Ooh, look, we can be, Look, 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 we can be even better. We can say, we can say if random data, if random data equals undefined, and we just return. And that way now I can spam this button and I never break the page. So this is fantastic. I have like a little bonus for you because on line 59, I don't know if you okay. noticed, there's a little bit of a, a linting question for you there. How would you go about yeah. uh, satisfying the linter there? 
So it's funny, I just saw it and I was wondering, I hadn't hovered over it, but I was wondering why is it linting? Because I've never had a lint on an empty arena use effect before. React hook use effect is a missing dependency. Fetch next user, either include it or remove the dependency array. Fetch next user. Okay, so if you're if you're asking me how I could like remove the the lint, I think you can you know I could. <laughs> That's <laughs> TS, TS ignore. I don't do this. Uh... Oh wait, why is TS ignore? This isn't TypeScript. Oh, it's ES lint. Never mind. Um, mm. So I could do the equivalent for ES lint if there is an equivalent, mm. but I'm not sure what it's telling me. Is it that? Um, is it that? Yeah, what is it? I, I'm not sure what it's telling me. So do you want me to look this up or? No, I can I can give you a hint here. So what it's saying is you're using fetch next user here, right? And that's a variable. Yep. And this variable could change. And so that means the reference could change. You know, some things could get messed up. You could have problems with closures and functions. And so what it's asking you to do is stick everything that you're using here. And so what will happen is every time that um, fetch, uh, fetch next user is changed, it's going to rerun the effect, right? Yeah, but why would I? What? Why would I want that though? Um. Well, okay. So why why you'd want that is I'd have to think like where the case this comes up. But basically, f fetch next user is is captured basically on mount and it's never being updated. So in this case, it doesn't really matter because you only want it to run on mount, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But basically, fetch next user could change, and that's what it's. But yeah, because like, because like, look, I could. That's weird though, because I, I could do this. Like, if you wanted, if you wanted to do something fancy, like if you refresh the um, the side thing, right? We could do like use effect, and when the counter changes, let me grab this, boom, and when the counter, when our counter changes, oh, I still have to refresh. When our counter changes. Then if we increase the counter, you see how it fetches. Like basically we don't even need the fetch next user button. But I'm still getting here Cause, the same link because it's, it's still gonna want it. Yeah. It's still gonna want this because it's inside of here. So it's but React yeah, wants you, you to put you everything that? that you're that you're using inside of there. Or as a dependency. But now, now what's it saying on the on the actual fetch next user function? It's it's like linting a ton of stuff. So hey, look if you add this is this is one way you can do it. It's I guess you'd say slightly jank, but you could create like a ref to the function. So I could create this. Like use ref? Yep. Yeah. And we have to import weird. that. And then here you could say dot current is equal to that. Yeah. And then you could, you could call that here. Uh, but to be honest with you, maybe maybe someone in the comments can let us know you, you could probably just ignore the linter on this one because I think it I think it's yeah. going to work fine with without that one. But usually, uh, Dan weird. always tells me never ignore the linter for that. So this is how I would get around it if I was if I wanted to like listen to the linter is I just turn it into a ref, and then I can do. But you know, it's weird because like I've I've never seen this lint bef this linter error before. Like we don't. I've never I've never. I've, I've never done it this way. Algo Expert needs this in their code base. They need their ESLint turned on. This is a uh, standard for hooks. So, so you right. you gotta do like uh, if if five right return true should should stop you from yeah. doing that, right? Because this hook comes what? after it. You you have you gotten this before? Well, I think this we get, but this isn't. Is this ES lint as well here, or is this even just TypeScript telling you that you're not calling no, everything? I think below? yep, it's a React hooks rules of hook uh, lint for you there. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's good to add if it's not in your co guys' code base because it'll catch some stuff. But I mean, as as you saw, some stuff you okay for the most part, you should be you should be listening to that lint rule. Usually, that lint rule is good. I'll have to talk to to our front end dev who's who watches all your videos anyway, so he'll probably be <laughs> watching this and. He probably, for all I know, I gave you, like, I told you something incorrect and we do have it in our code base or something. Wait, sorry, my cat is next up. I guess we'll is find out. Me, um, <laughs> you're, you're not as washed up as I thought you were going to be. You're, you, 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 went, you went through it, like, very smoothly. I thought we were going to have more bumps. I would I would have I would have made it Ten. harder. I would have made it harder than this if uh, I knew you were so gonna I, do this so smoothly. I, you impressed me. I passed 
you pass, I passed the, like, for sure. the, like, basic, basic Ben Awad test, but maybe not the, like, elite Ben Awad well, test. Well, he, he, here's the thing, though. Like, every every website, you're going to display a list that you fetch from an API and have pagination. So, like, you showed me you've done that. That's, like, a, you know, that's literally, like, most of web dev anyway, so. Yeah, but, yeah, but on, on some websites, you have to actually allow users to, like, type their code and run their code and change, like, programming languages. Next time, so, you're like, going to implement solutions. authentication for us, okay? Oh no, please, please don't make me work with like auth APIs. But okay, Ben, if I can say one final word to your viewers, first of all, I hope that we entertained you. And if you enjoyed this video, then let us know in the comments below, because maybe we should do like a second version of this. We can do a second version of the video that we did on my channel. Um, that might be fun. Yes, so if you have not already, go check out Clement's channel. There's a second half of this video where he interviews me and let's just say I did surprisingly bad or surprisingly good on the algo test. I'll let you guys see. You guys are able yeah. how I did, though.